These days, you can't open social media or watch the news without coming across Ozempic. The weight loss before and afters, the expert saying take it and the expert saying don't take it. As with so many things involving weight, the coverage seems to be everywhere all at once and confusing as hell. One thing I've been wondering, and I've gathered you've been wondering as well, based on the requests I've gotten to cover this, is, is there any role for Ozempic if I have lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, or another autoimmune condition? Should I take it? Should I avoid it? Well, by the end of this video, you will know what drugs like Ozempic are, why those of us in the world of rheumatology should care, and signs it may be a good option for you and how to bring it up with your doc. So let's get started. Why should those of us in rheumatology, the patients and the providers care about Ozempic and similar meds? Well, it's because it is a well-known fact that almost all of our autoimmune and inflammatory conditions, so things like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, and gout, just to name a few, carry with them a higher risk of metabolic syndrome and cardiovascular disease. So what does all that mean? We tend to focus only on weight. My doctor said I need to lose weight, but it's really more than that. Metabolic syndrome is a collection of signs and symptoms related to insulin resistance, obesity, and cardiovascular disease. It is the result of a complex interaction between our metabolic and immune systems that is influenced by genetics, nutrition, and our microbiome. So what is insulin resistance? Well, insulin is a hormone that tells all of our tissues to take up the glucose or sugar floating around in our blood. The tissues can then use the glucose as energy. When we have insulin resistance, our tissues don't pay enough attention to our insulin. Hey. And this leaves too much glucose floating around in our blood. The high blood glucose level can then lead to a diagnosis of diabetes. Having a high glucose level in our blood just by itself is pro-inflammatory. It can activate certain immune cells and inflammatory proteins, and this is thought to be the cause of many of the consequences of diabetes, such as eye, heart, and kidney problems. This is confounded by the high level of visceral fat tissue found in those with metabolic syndrome. Like every other tissue in our body, fat tissue has certain actions, and in metabolic syndrome, it is thought that fat tissue actually dysfunctions and leads to higher levels of inflammation. All of this is to say, metabolic syndrome is a pro-inflammatory state. Okay, Ortiz, so, so what? How does this impact my lupus or my rheumatoid arthritis? Well, first of all, we know that those with autoimmune conditions have high rates of metabolic syndrome. Upwards of a third to a half of those with an autoimmune condition will also have a metabolic syndrome. So it's a double inflammation whammy. We also know that generally those with obesity or metabolic syndrome tend to do worse when they have lupus or rheumatoid arthritis than those who don't. Those with lupus and obesity have been found to have worse quality of life and increased pain compared to those who only have lupus. Rheumatoid arthritis patients with obesity have poor responses to their treatments, including the fancy biologics. Plus, we know that autoimmune disease leads to an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. This means autoimmune disease leads to a higher risk of heart attacks and strokes. It has long been thought that this is the result of long-standing inflammation and the best defense against that, meaning the best way to protect against those heart attacks and strokes in the future is to get your inflammation under control today. Getting your autoimmune disease in remission or as close to it as possible has been shown to provide the best protection to your heart and brain long term. But what do we do if we can't get to remission? And now that we understand how metabolic syndrome may be a second driver of inflammation in some folks, should we also focus our attention on that? And that's where Ozempic and and similar medications come in. Semaglutide, the generic name for Ozempic, is a GLP-1 agonist, meaning it 
attaches and activates the GLP-1 receptor that is found in certain cells in our pancreas. This drug mimics a naturally occurring GLP-1 that we make in our gut in response to food that then stimulates our pancreas to secrete insulin. Because of what this medication targets, it was initially studied and approved for those with diabetes. During the initial trial, however, they found that these meds not only lowered people's blood glucose levels, but also slowed down people's stomachs and decreased food cravings, leading to weight loss. There are now studies evaluating the anti-inflammatory effects of these medications, as it appears to impact certain levels of pro-inflammatory protein and the function of certain immune cells. So what's going on here? and how can this information be used if you have lupus or RNA? Well, there still is a lot we don't know. The fact that there are anti-inflammatory effects doesn't really surprise me, as so many of our medications that we found to have benefits aside from what they were initially engineered to do is due to an unforeseen anti-inflammatory effect. But how can we utilize this in autoimmune disease is far from understood. In fact, these anti-inflammatory effects have only been studied in those with type 2 diabetes, so it's not certain the same effects would be seen in those who don't have type 2 diabetes. At the time of this recording in 2024, I was only able to find a few case reports discussing the use of these medications medications in those with autoimmunity. So should a medication like Ozempic be part of your treatment strategy? Well, right now, there is no evidence that these medications can do anything for your underlying lupus, RA, or any other autoimmune or inflammatory condition. However, our job is to not only take care of your present self, but also your future self. And we need to make sure that we are doing everything we can to protect your heart and brain. That's where there may be a role for these medications in your care. So some questions I want you to ponder and bring up with your dog at your next visit. Do you have insulin resistance? How would you know? A few signs or symptoms to look out for would be you gained weight or you feel tired and hungry all the time, which I know the tired thing is hard when you also have an autoimmune disease. Have you noticed you're thirsty all the time and peeing more than usual? Have your periods become irregular? When you have an active autoimmune condition, these symptoms can overlap with your other conditions, so it can be difficult to tell just by symptoms alone, which is where blood tests come in. You can have your fasting blood sugar or glucose level checked, as well as your hemoglobin A1C. The A1C will tell us what your average blood sugar has been running over the past three months. If they find insulin resistance, what should you do about it. And this is where medications like semiglutide may come up. And just a word, this conversation may not happen or really need to happen in your rheumatologist's office. Management of metabolic syndrome tends to fall in your primary care doctor's jurisdiction. I have always felt that primary care, when done well, is a specialty in and of itself and managing metabolic syndrome is really where PCP shines. If you know this kind of thing is not really up your rheumatologist alley, save these questions for your next PCP appointment. Remember, there is no evidence that these medications can or will help your autoimmune condition. However, there is enough reasons to think maybe that I would encourage you to track your symptoms if you and your doctor decide to start. So what should you track? Well, things like your joint pain, your mornings, how much ibuprofen you need, and your energy level. I wouldn't expect anything to change quickly, but keeping track may give you some insights into your condition and further your own expertise into your health. GLP-1 meds like semiglutide have exposed what those of us who specialize in autoimmunity have known for a very long time, which is everything is connected. The gut, immune system, the endocrine system, and the nervous system are all interwoven. And when things go awry and you develop an autoimmune disease, having a multi-pronged approach may get us the best results. In fact, does get us the best results. A multi-pronged approach can include diet and lifestyle changes, and we know there are a slew of diet and lifestyle changes that can positively impact metabolic syndrome. I hope this has helped you understand when and why a medication like semiglutide may be helpful and giving you some food for thought to bring up with your doctor to keep the conversation going. I'd love it if you would share this with anyone you think could use this information, and don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.